in every rocket. It's three Falcon 9 rockets tied together. You need a lot more energy to get this thing off the Earth and on its way to Jupiter. So that's what the, basically what's going to happen today. I'm uh, Mark Smith, by the way. I'm here to represent NASA, and I'm going to be doing the commentary for your launch. Okay, so I'll be here. Open. Can you all hear on this uh, system out here? Yeah, yeah. Out there in the grass, can you hear it okay over there too? All right, good. All right, so uh, I'll be back uh, shortly and do some commentary for the launch, but I just want to make sure that you all know where to look. Across the water out there, the big tall tower out there, that is the Starship launch tower for the new SpaceX rocket. You probably heard about that one. They did launch that yesterday, and it worked. It actually worked. <laughs> Which is surprising. But anyway, uh, anyway, they eventually want to launch that rocket from there. But uh, that the smaller black structure with the little pole on the top there, that is the launch structure for the shuttles originally. And so that is next to that is where the Falcon Heavy rocket is. So on the other side of it, so you can't really see it from, from here. But when the engines go on, you know, it's got 27 engines nine for each core of the rocket and you're gonna, it's bright so you're going to see it okay now after about uh, 10 or 15 seconds you're going to feel it the, the energy from the engines the vibration is going to come across the water it's come rumbling into this area here so don't be alarmed and i would highly advise if you have anybody with you that may be a younger person or, or a person that may needs to be you know comforted let them know that, that that vibration will be affecting their body a little bit it won't hurt you uh, because you're far enough away but it is a, it's that's why you're here <laughs> it's an experience so anyway that's you can expect that 1206 the launch time okay i got to do a couple of things i'll be back shortly if you got any questions don't hesitate to flag me down and ask me anything thank you all And here we go. 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff of Falcon Heavy with Europa Clipper. Unveiling the mysteries of an enormous ocean lurking beneath the icy crust of Jupiter's moon, Europa. Engine chamber pressures are nominal. See that the chamber pressures are almost clear. All 27 Merlin engines look great. 
rocket beginning to roll. Putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Coming up, they're going to back off those engines just a bit. So we're getting ready to head into maximum max power speed. and telemetry nominal. Here, the power and telemetry on the vehicle are good there. Everything's looking uh, really Falcon well. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. They have uh, reduced power in the center core uh, to get through maximum max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the launch vehicle as we approach that. The two side boosters at full throttle. A beautiful shot there is our camera team. Max Q. Locking into the rocket on a clear blue sky. The view from the booster cam back down on Earth. And there we heard the call for max Q. The vehicle is passing through maximum dynamic pressure. Uh, next thing up in about two minutes will be a booster engine cutoff where we see the two side booster engines, all 18, shut down and get ready for booster separation. But the vehicle is performing very well. Looking at all the telemetry that we have, uh, power and trajectory are nominal. We've been flying for just under two minutes so far. Everything looking good. Beside boosters, once they do their job, they will be expended. If you're familiar with the Falcon Heavy, you know that they bring the boosters back on certain launches, but not on this one, because all of the performance is needed to push Europa Clipper into its proper orbit. Things continue to look good as the vehicle uh, heads down its uh, ascent phase here. All telemetry is looking very nominal for this flight this morning. Uh, Falcon Heavy is performing very well. Now we're just about 30 seconds away from separating those side boosters. Their engines will cut off first, then they will separate. MVAC is chilling. Starting to chill down that MVAC D engine in the second stage. And that's uh, where we need to get the engine uh, chilled to the proper temperatures before flowing uh, liquid oxygen and RP-1 into it. So uh, they're conditioning the engine to make sure things are ready for when it's ready to uh, start up. Stand by for booster separation. Booster engine cutoff. Side booster separation confirmed. And there they go. Those two boosters previously flown on Psyche. Uh, this will be their sixth flight. We thank you for their service this morning. They did a great job of getting Falcon Heavy and Europa Clipper on its way as the center core takes over and continues mission uh, down its ascent. Things are looking really good in the telemetry. Power and trajectory look nominal, and uh, chamber pressures on the nine center core engines look really good. And just a little more, 20 seconds from now, we'll get the cutoff of the main engine on the center core booster that remains. Four seconds after that, we will separate. Flying out over the Atlantic Ocean. There's a look from inside. There we, we see go. stage one. Uh, stage separation down. confirmed. And stage separation from the uh, center core. Getting ready for MVAC startup, SES-1. We're getting some applause here in the Mission Directors Center, and there you see the MVAC-D engine lighting up. Next thing up in about 10 seconds will be fairing separation. NYPY FTS has saved. And fa the fairing has protected Europa Clipper on its ascent th up into space, but once we get into space, we don't need that fairing anymore. Uh, so there they go. Fairing confirmed. Fairing has separated, and those will be recovered, Daryl, by uh, SpaceX's own recovery okay, ship, Go Cosmos. Up. And there um, you see them falling away into space. That is the only part of this rocket that will be recovered.